In today's video, should the obese use cardio and resistance training to lose weight? Hey guys, what's going on? Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com and welcome to today's video. For today's topic, it's about a question I got on my Instagram direct messages. So thank you guys for the great questions. So many great questions to get to, so keep them coming. I'll keep answering them. And um, this one specifically really spoke to me because basically the question is, and I'll post it up here, a lot of times diet and cardio are addressed for the obese population when it comes to getting into shape, losing weight. Um, but very rarely is resistance training addressed. And there's a few reasons for that, and I'm going to get into those reasons. But the first and most important thing I want to talk about is, should you use resistance training for an obese population if you want to lose weight? Well, only if you want to lose body fat and weight at a rate faster than resistance training or cardio alone. So obviously my answer is going to be yes. However, there are some things we need to discuss. But first, I thought since I'm doing a video on this topic, what does the research say? Well, I'm gonna link an article below from PubMed, which actually had a large number of participants. I believe nearly 200 completed this study. They had three different groups. One group that did resistance training only, one group that did cardiovascular exercise only, and one group that did both combined and they compared and the results were quite heavily in favor of the group that added resistance training to cardiovascular exercise. Now that's not a surprise to any of us that like to lift weights but one of the most common questions I get when it comes to weight loss is will putting on some muscle stall weight loss and the answer to that question is probably yes if you're counting the scale but if you go to this study and look you'll actually see the exciting part was the group that did resistance training and cardio lost almost the same amount of weight as the group that did just cardio. The big difference was their lean body mass actually increased and their fat mass actually decreased. So although the weight loss was nearly the same for both groups, the cardio group and the cardio resistance training group, the body composition for that group that did both was much better. And here's what I want to talk about with my clients that I work with in the overweight population, what I'm looking for. We are looking for a lifestyle change, something sustainable. If you take someone that's heavily overweight, put them on super low calories and have them do a bunch of cardio, they're going to drop weight. But what fun is that? What reason are they going to have to sustain that lifestyle? They're not going to be able to sustain super low calories for the rest of their lives. They're not generally going to be able to sustain doing a ton of cardio unless they get into like endurance sports. However, we can all keep up with a little bit of resistance training, a little bit of cardio and a healthy approach to eating without a doubt. That is just how our bodies operate. So when I have a client that's in this situation that needs to lose a bunch of weight, I put them on a resistance training program. Now, earlier I mentioned that there are some considerations you have to make for the obese population. Most of those are going to be safety in the gym. Depending on how overweight you are, movement patterns, joints, all these things have to be taken into consideration. My first thing that I love to do with my overweight clients is just get them walking. It's hard to explain how impactful walking can be for someone that's very overweight, okay? You're going to actually see some hypertrophy from this, from using the body, pumping the arms, moving the legs. You'll actually see a little bit of muscular hypertrophy. You'll also just get some benefits from the cardiovascular aspect, okay? So you're actually huffing and puffing while you are that overweight. Someone who's very skinny that goes for a walk is not gonna get the same impact as someone that's very overweight. So that's my first step. The next step is to get into a resistance training program where you're doing two to three days a week of easy to execute movements. We're not gonna put someone in the gym that's obese and put them in a position where they need to do squats and deadlifts unless they're with a trained professional and they're very comfortable doing that. However, most gyms now are equipped with fantastic equipment like machines, dumbbells, things that the average gym goer without a lot of experience can start doing and that that is what I really suggest for my clients. Now, 
I'm about to do a profile on a client of mine that I've been with for uh, almost a year now who is going to be hitting the 100 pound fat loss mark. And when I do the video with this person, what I can't wait to discuss is the fact that there were some weeks where we did not lose weight. There were some weeks we lost three to four pounds and the following week we did not lose weight. However, I know that when someone is new to resistance training, they're going to put on lean body mass rather quickly. Well, this can be disheartening for someone that's focused on losing weight. However, I was able to convince him that we are not just focused on weight. The weeks where his body weight was stable, we actually still saw a loss of inches in measurements, meaning he was losing body fat at the same time he was increasing his lean body mass. So there was a net zero loss on the scale. And if you're just using the scale, you might get disheartened. However, if you're paying attention to all the other things that matter, well, you're going to see some good things happening. So do I think resistance training should be a part of a weight loss program? Yes, it has to be done properly, but it's going to benefit the user for the long term. You're going to get some benefits as in there's a lifestyle change, okay? It's sustainable. Going into the gym and lifting weights for most of us is a lot more fun than just getting outside and running, okay? There's going to be a synergistic effect of doing cardio and weights in succession together versus doing just cardio or just weights, okay? That's going to be it for me today, guys. If you want to know more, you can click on the link below. See the PubMed study. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.